Hello students, in this video we'll discuss actuarial notation for the survival function in the CDF of a lifetime random variable. Let's let t sub x be a random variable which measures the future lifetime of a person currently aged X. Then we'll define, so this would be a random variable, so I have a PDF and a CDF. So the CDF of T of X is given by the following formula. So the CDF will be the probability that Tx is less than or equal to T. And this measures the probability that the person whose age is X survives up no more than T years. And this in actual notation is denoted by Tqx. We can also write down the survival function. So the survival function of Tx is the probability that Tx is greater than T, so the person whose age x survives longer than T years, and this is denoted Tpx. And so of course from these two observations we can note that Tqx plus Tpx is equal to 1. One other thing to note too is that it looks from this, this is the notation where both T and x are subscripts, so here both T and x are subscripts of P and Q respectively. Okay, So we have our survival function of the CDF and of course we note that the derivative with respect to T of T Q of X is equal to F X of T and this is the PDF of T X. So in particular, what we could do is if we want to find the future lifetime, so the expected future lifetime, as a consequence of this, the expected future lifetime of x, we can write that as e, if this is a continuous random variable, we're going to write this as e circle x, and that's just going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of t times this function f sub x of t dt. And of course what we can do to compute this is we can integrate this by parts. So what we can do is we can call this over here our u, and then this over here we'll call that our dv. And then what we can do is we can say that by integration by parts I have u times v. So I'll write that as t. And then an antiderivative of the antiderivative of the PDF is either the CDF or the negative of the survival function. So we'll put negative of the survival function over here, Tpx from t goes from 0 to infinity, minus the integral from 0 to infinity of v, which I'll write as negative Tpx, and then du will just be a 1, dt. And so we have here, let's look at these limits of integration. When I plug in t equals infinity, that's the probability. So if we write these out in terms of limits over here, let's start with the boundary terms. So over here we'll have, as t gets closer and closer to infinity, we're going to have something that looks like this. We'll have a negative of something that's going to infinity times infinity px. And then we'll have a plus 0 zero px. Those are our boundary terms. Now, of course, the probability that a person whose age x survives an infinite number of years is zero past a certain point, so these limits over here are zero. And similarly, the probability that you survive zero years is one, but you're multiplying that by zero, so those are zero. So these boundary terms vanish when you plug in zero and infinity respectively. And now we can simplify this, so this exactly is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of just tpx dt, and this of course is assuming that the life, it's a continuous random variable, right? So this assumes 
that the random variable is continuous. So the expected future lifetime of x, we see by this result, so we've shown that the expected future lifetime of a person age act for a continuous lifetime is the integral from zero to infinity of the survival function. Now oftentimes what we'll see is we'll see that this infinity can be replaced by omega, where this is the maximal lifetime for a person age x. In other words, you can figure out, according to all the statistics you have, the maximal lifetime of someone who's aged, currently aged x, and you can use that as your functional upper limit and the limits of integration when doing these problems. Thank you very much.